My name is Brittany O'Brien and I am from Los Angeles, California. I knew I wanted to pursue music photography back in 2012. I met a band in San Francisco where I was living who were new to the scene. They were kind of like blossoming and they had asked me to kind of do everything for them because I was a young kind of experimental photographer. Working with the band kind of changed everything from my trajectory, going to shows at night and going out to the beach, taking their photos from back in 2012. I was like, this is, this is what I need to figure out how to do for real. I think a big tip that I would have is you have to be able to be comfortable with yourself and confident in who you are before you go out on a tour and be like, I like me and my personality and I'm ready to share that with a band because if you come out there timid and, and, and quiet it's going to be much harder to kind of expose yourself and let people see you to get more comfortable. It's very important to build a relationship if you want organic photos. The band has to trust you. They have to trust that they know you as a person. If you want to get up in their space and document in the most raw and real scenarios then um, you're going to have to be more than just acquaintances. Just learn a little bit about them and take photos from afar for a while. Just kind of very standard, like green room and show photos. And as we learn more about each other, I kind of start to creep in there a little bit more and get a little bit more candid. It's the only way to be able to capture the moments that are unique and unusual to see, like you know, people getting out of the shower or with the towels on their heads or coming out of their bed like crusty in the morning. They have to develop a trust with you before you can get there. And that is the biggest thing for me as a tour photographer is to establish that before I move forward. Create organic photos by being upfront with the band before I start. If I'm uh, doing portraits with the band, I will sit literally sit with them on the ground or uh, sit somewhere and just be like, let's just talk for a minute. I wanna kind of get you guys more comfortable and not feel like you have to be on. Uh, because I always try to let them know that the photos are going to be much more rich if they're not acting and if they're just hanging out and being themselves. So I try to go over that before I photograph a band and kind of tell jokes and, and let them loosen up a little bit. That way they can realize, they, since it's pointed out before we start, they realize that they're they're posing and being uncomfortable and then they stop doing it. So like, oh right, I just gotta, I just gotta be myself. If it's a live show and they're kind of eating it up a little bit in front of the camera. I usually t use that to my advantage because creating live portraits is always really fun when the band kind of plays along, especially if they can get down with you on your level near the edge of the photo pit and just kind of give it to you because it's kind of rare to get really rad portraits unless the band is kind of playing into it a little bit. So I really like when they kind of act with me during a live set. I try to keep it interesting when I'm shooting with the same band over and over again by looking at our space for the day. So if we're in Texas, for example, I usually will kind of get up before the band, go get coffee, check out what's happening around where we are, or wander the venue and get a scope it, kind of just see what, what our face is like for the day because I wake up and I don't know what my photos are going to be like at all. So getting a sense of my space and, and where I am can help me guide the band to do things with me that I think will lead to cool photos later. Anything to, to keep it fresh because, you know, we toured for 14 months and I learned that learning your space beforehand makes a huge difference. So this Circadian Pictures grant I won in December and my prompt was to document the live music workers of how we all just kind of went out of work at the same exact time and how most people will not be seeing work again till 2022. So with a whole entire sect of work gone, how are these people coping? What are they doing? How have they transitioned? It's, there's not a lot of love for the people behind the scenes. There's a lot of love for the artists themselves, which I mean, there should be, but you don't really hear about the bus drivers and you know what they're doing. They've been driving buses for 30 years and now they're just out of work. So it's just, I wanna shine a light on the people that don't usually get any love even though they kind of run the whole show. I will be meeting up with people in their space and kind of doing a very Annie Leibovitz style photography where I'm just gonna place them somewhere in their house and take a very candid photo of their space with them in it and then couple that with their handwritten story, their COVID story and then the photo will be blown up next to their font so you get like an overall 
feeling of this person and what they've gone through since COVID kind of ended our industry. So what's next for me is I'm a pretty optimistic person. I'm pretty hopeful. I like to plan. I like to, I like to dream. So I have a lot of things that I'm, I'm thinking about doing. I mean, this Arcadian Pictures project is a big one that will be ongoing throughout March. And I just have been doing a lot of um, work on my environmental blog, which is called Framework, kind of photographing people based on different environmental subjects. And that'll be ongoing throughout the year. And then I'm doing like an upcoming thrift project. So I'm having musicians donate their clothes to me. And then I will be selling them um, and donating the money to save our stages, which would be a really fun project to kind of photograph people in their old clothes and then try to sell them for charity. It's, I thought it would be fun because people, you know, people love a piece of their artist, their, their favorite band. And a lot of people I know just are like always getting rid of their clothes. And I'm like, well, just give them to me and I will have fun like photographing and selling them to people and making some money for charity. So that's coming together slowly. I have to get a little bit more of a bigger pile of things. That'll be a fun project probably in the spring.